Dear Diary, it's Lily again. It's been several months now since my love has joined me at the orphanage. It remains for me an experience full of both sorrow and joy. Sorrow that my love is suffering so, but joy that he's always with me here and I get to be near him every day. I often wonder if I'm a bad person for feeling such joy as a result of my love's tragic loss. But I cannot deny that I love him and love being close to him. My love remains inconsolable. He is now a hollow shell of the brave knight he was when he rescued me from those bullies nearly two years ago. As I write to you before, he was very close with both of his parents. He seems to have loved them very much and they loved him. But mostly I know this from information I was able to get before their sudden passing in that horrible car accident. My love has not wished to speak to them since arriving here. He remains isolated and alone by his own choosing. The caregivers here have reached out and tried to comfort him many times, as have I, but he won't accept anybody's help. I believe that most of the time he doesn't even know we exist. He seems to be lost in a sea of his own depression and fear. I hurt for him so much because I have been there. The experience has made me see that there were so many people trying to comfort me as well when I was going through the loss of my mother, but I refused to accept any reality that wouldn't acknowledge my worthlessness. That is until my love saved me. And now, I want to save him. But my efforts seem to be in vain. This other day, I sat with him at supper and I told him that he was the greatest friend I've ever had. He did not respond. He did not even look at me, but continued to simply eat the plate of food that rested in front of him. He often closed his eyes when he did so. I think the food may have been triggering pleasant memories, so I didn't say anything else to him. I didn't want to interrupt a warm moment for my love. Afterwards, in the study... I brought him some flowers that I know his mother liked, hoping they might cheer him up. He looked at them blankly, and then took them from me. But he did not smile. I don't know if they were a help. He sat on the sofa, and let me sit beside him and lay my head on his shoulder. That was nice, but he didn't speak. That actually may be a good thing, as he didn't ask how I knew those flowers were his mother's favourites. I don't think this is the right time to tell him that I used to sneak into his house at night while his parents were still alive and read his diary while he slept. I wonder if the fact that his mother's favourite flower, Lily, which happens to be my name, means anything. I'd like to think it does, and that I was especially sent here to help my love get through this. I went to go get my love a drink. When I returned, he disappeared. But I knew where he'd be. I found him in his room, crying softly in his bed. I'd never had the courage before to enter uninvited, but this time I felt like he needed me. I sat down gently beside him and placed a loving hand on his shoulder. I told him I understood, and that I'd been where he was now. I wanted to be there for him. For the first time, I told him that I loved him. I can't believe that I was brave enough to say it but I think it didn't matter because I'm not even certain he knew I was there. I wanted to climb into bed with him and just hold him, but I knew that might be harmful to him, so I left. Diary, why do I enjoy the fact that my love is here? Does that make me evil? I know I'm being selfish, but I do love him. I do love him that he's with me now in this place. I've just written to you, as I have many times before, and how much pain he's in and how lonely he feels. So why do I feel good at all? He is my love and I do not wish to ever see him in such agony. If I could, I would lay down my life so that his parents could return and be with him, and my love would be happy again. I mean that, diary. I want my love to smile and be happy again, even if it was without me. I have paused to think about what I've just wrote. 
I realise now that I should not feel guilty about my feelings for my love. Do I mean it when I say that I would sacrifice myself for his happiness? I believe I do. I did not write that flippantly. But I admit that I haven't actually been given the choice. I want him happy, whatever the cost is personally. I do not feel joy at my love's pain. I feel joy because in my love's darkest situation, I have been given an opportunity to try and make it better. To rescue him in the way he rescued me. When my love rescued me from those bullies, he didn't just end an outward threat. He rescued me from an internal attack as well. I realise now that there was others trying to comfort and love me when I was in distress, but I would not let them. It took his selfless act of bravery to show me that somebody did really love me, that I was not completely alone. I think I know now what I have to do. We both turn 18 within a few months and will leave this place. I will leave a few weeks before he does. I will hate to be separated from him for that time, but it will allow me to prepare. I have thought of a plan to save my love, but it will take some doing. Money will not be an issue at least. The money I received from my inheritance will be legally available to me on my 18th birthday. I will finish planning while I'm here and can continue to watch over and care for my love in this place. When I leave, I'll make all the necessary arrangements and when my love leaves, I'll wait for the right moment to rescue him the way he rescued me. My love, you will be happy again. You will know love again. You will smile and know that you will never again be alone. I swear it. I love you.